Hi, my name is Bud Kraus, and I'm here to show you how to error check your HTML code. There's a couple ways to do this, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the new HTML checker. And it really is a new HTML checker, pun intended. That is, this checker comes from the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, and looks to be replacing one that they've been using for about 15 years that I'll demonstrate a little bit later on after or towards the end of the video. The purpose of error checking your code is just that, to make sure that there are no errors in your file. This is going to really help you out when you go on to do other things like JavaScript and CSS and so forth. Anyway, let's get cracking. Um, now, with this HTML validator, there's actually three different ways to error check your page or your code. I'm only going to use one. But I'll show you the three over here. Before I do that, there's a couple of different options I can set. And I'm going to do show source. And what, the, what this will do is when I validate my code, the source code of my page is going to show up in the results. And it's going to be a good visual aid to show me where the errors are. So it's very important to check that one off. You can experiment with these others, but I generally like to use that one. And then the three different ways that I was talking about validating, one is just to do this by address. So I could paste in a URL from anywhere on the web and check their somebody else's page or my page. Or, I'm going to just skip down over here, I could paste in the code right over here and do my checking directly this way, which I do sometimes, but I'm not going to do for this demonstration. For this demonstration, I'm just going to do by file upload. So I already have a file on my desktop, it's called bad.html, which I know has coding errors in there. And I'm going to use that for the demonstration. So uh, it says choose a file, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And let's go to where it's located, which is over here, desktop, bad.html, right here. And so now you can see over here, bad.html is ready to go. All I need now is just to check, check. And immediately I see that there are three different errors on my page. Now, when you do this, you may find the way things are set up is that you're going to also get info messages. Okay, you might get two or three of those where it says error it would say info and it would just give you some information about your document. I would ignore those. I think there's a setting that you can toggle to get rid of the info messages because they really don't mean a whole lot. It's errors that must be fixed. You may also see warnings and warnings are just warnings. But the errors are exactly what they are, mistakes in the code. And those are the ones that you have to address. And right over here, I see that um, it looks like I'm missing the doc type statement and also the closing title tag. Well, let's just click on this link over here. And this is what I was talking about. By the fact that I ticked off that show source, here's the source code of my page. Okay. By the way, let me just show you real quick. This is the page. This is the bad.html file. Notice there isn't anything in there. There's actual text content, but you don't see it, and that's because of the fact that there are coding errors. So let's see what we're going to do. So I can see, okay, oops, I missed the doc type statement and title and so forth. Well, my file happens to be already open, and here it is. This is I'm using text edit, but you can use anything you want to edit any kind of source code, like you could use uh, Notepad and BBEdit, and uh, you can use Text Wrangler and Dreamweaver code version, and you could use Sublime Text, whatever. Don't use Word, whatever you do, to make web pages. Okay, not a good idea. Anyway, like I said, there was a mistake in the fact that I didn't have the required doc type statement in my In my code. So I just put it in there and I'm also going to knock this one out here too because I can see right over here just like it says title doesn't have a closing tag. So why don't I just add that closing tag right now and I'm going to save the file. Now I could do file save. I could do it that way but I'm also just going to do command s with the keyboard. I find that to be just a lot easier. Okay and that's really important and and now I'm going to choose the file again. So choose and bad. Okay. And let's see what happens now. So we're going to check again. Or actually we're going to recheck. And 
uh, instead of three years, it has five years. Let me see. It has, yeah, it has five years. Now, you're going to say, well, aren't, should there be less? Well, well, this has to do with the nature and the way the validator, also called the parser, looks and examines your code. So the fact that you fixed a file, or fixed an error, you actually fixed two errors, it actually uncovered more mistakes now. Well, that's okay, all right? That's the process that we're going to use to eventually get rid of all the errors. And one over here that says you have a, um, a stray end tag over here, H1, which means whenever you see a message like stray end tag, it means there's a closing tag, it's just a stray. Where's the opening tag? So that's a mistake. In fact, let's just click on this over here. And again, it takes us to our source code. And we can see right here, well, this is what they mean by the stray end tag. That is that a closing H1 tag, but it's stray because it doesn't have an opening H1 tag. So mix, So that's a mistake. And also over here, it's lit up because you have your, I have the horizontal rule is written incorrectly. So I'm just going to go back to my file over here and scroll down over here. Now, one of the disadvantages of using text editor notepad is it doesn't give you the code lines. So these other applications I mentioned a bit ago do give you the code lines if you're into that. And for some reason, I never really got into it. But real hard code coders say that 10 times. They would probably want to have it in there. So I'm going to scroll let's see let's go down to here okay and that's clearly a mistake and that's so I'm gonna just remove or replace that slash shouldn't be there now this would be valid right over here just as a whoops sorry let's just do it right just HR this would be okay but I could leave it just like this or, this would be fine, or I could also put in this over here. This is called an empty tag. There's a whole bunch of these in HTML. They're just, they don't have opens, they don't have closes. They just do their thing right in the place where you put it. So that's fine. Okay, and now I'm going to put in that opening H1 element because that'll close that stray problem up anyway. And let me do Command S again. And again, we're going to recheck what we have here. And now, let's see. Um, well, I want to tell you that this validator, the new HTML validator, is really new. It's a little bit buggy as of September 2015. In other words, they're experimenting with it. And it, you'll find it to be a little bit of a problem. So you go over here and you go, well, where's the choose the file business? I don't see that anymore. So you're going to have to like toggle this to address, okay, and then go back to over here and then file upload, and because that's what we need to have, okay, is to be able to choose the file. We have to have that option here. So go back to here, bad, and that's what I mean by buggy. It just doesn't work smoothly the way the old validator worked, but it does the validation process correctly, or so it would seem. Anyway, I'm going to validate it again or recheck. Okay, good. We're getting fewer errors. I always like that. And again, I see more with the stray end stuff. And let's just take a look at what we have over here. Well, okay, well, it doesn't look like this is lit up. Oh, this is fine. Let's just see what's missing here. Oh, look at this. Well, this one lit up real easy. Okay, so address. So let me put in a closing address tag because and the general rule is for every open tag, you're required to put in a closing tag. So let's just do that. And I'll explain in a minute or two that my hard and fast rule about every open tag must be closed is not really true anymore. Okay, and again, Command S. And let's go back here and revalidate or recheck the file. So again, I'm going to have to, so every time you make a change and you do a save, then you're going to have to re-upload the file again. It's just a pain in the neck, but it's always been that way. Oops, that's not what I had in mind, but that's all right. Let's, let's do this. Let's do here. Let's go back here. Let's see what we have here. We have here. Check. All right. There we go. So according to this, I just have one mistake here. And it looks like I still have this HR, this horror. I still have an open tag here. 
See if we can find. Okay, let's go look over here. Oh, here we go. So I missed that one altogether. Sorry. And just put in the H1 element over here. It, you know, I sort of like to take them from top to bottom, but it doesn't always work out that way. It can be a little bit messy in the order in which you're going to be adding these tags or taking them out or editing them. So don't worry about that. But what you want to get is to okay, choose the file, bad. Okay. And let's do this over here. Good. And we get this little green bar of happiness that tells you that you have a valid page. That is your code meets the W3C specifications. Now, one thing I want to show you uh, is just something that I'm just going to take this unordered list down over here. Here it is. And take out this one list item closing tag. Just eliminate it. Now, watch what happens. Now, this goes to that idea for every open tag, there must be a close tag. Well, it's not exactly true. So I'm going to, again, I have to toggle this to get it right. There we go. Choose the file. Bad. And now I'm going to, and fine, that's good. Now notice, just to make sure, I made, it, I made that change in the code. And there we are. I don't have that closing li tag, but it didn't report that as an error to me. And that's the reason being is that there are some elements that don't require closing tags anymore. So, like a closing p, you don't really need it anymore. A closing li, you don't need that anymore. <clears throat> but there are certain tags like the closing head tags, and the heading tags, and the closing address tag, and so forth. A lot of them do still require that you put in the close. Here's my rule. Just put it in there. And the reason being is that for beginners, you really don't know which tags can be safely omitted and which tags must be in there to be a valid HTML file. So just leave them in there and no one will know about it except you and me. Okay, but um, one last thing I want, or two last things really I want to go over. One is when you validate your page, you should know that Although the code is valid and meets the W3C specifications, it doesn't mean you have created a well-formed document. What do I mean by well-formed document? That is a document that uses the HTML tags correctly. So you could have a document that uses nothing but heading tags, and it will validate, but it's not well-formed. That is, you didn't use the tags to properly describe or mark up the content so that people and machines could understand what your content is all about. Headings, subheadings, paragraphs, lists, links, and so forth. That's a good, well-formed document. So the validator will check to see the that the tags are in the proper sequence and that they're closed and so forth, but it won't tell you, it won't give you a qualitative assessment. That is, did you use the correct tags for a particular purpose? Okay, it doesn't understand things like that yet. In order for it to understand on that level, it would require artificial intelligence. So maybe one day we'll get there, but we're not there yet. The other thing to take note of, oh, by the way, this was the bad.html file, and if I refresh it, now you can see the content. Okay, so, but as you may have noticed during the whole validation process, not once did I ever come here and take a look at the um, the way the page looked because the way it looks is all taken up with cascading style sheets and not by HTML. So the look thing didn't mean anything to me as I was validating my pages. That's very typical for beginners to look at the way the page looks in the browser. I get that. But for more advanced people, they just don't, okay, because it's just a waste of time. Now, I mentioned just a little bit ago, and to finish this all up, that this is a new validator, and it really is. And it's experimental. Um, and there are going to be changes made to it along the way. So I would expect that when you use this, you may see some different things. Maybe things will work a little bit better. Maybe they'll add a new feature. Maybe something will be taken out. But at the end of the day, you're going to look to use the file upload method. And you're going to upload a file. And you're going to validate it the way I did it. The one thing I wanted to show you was that if you go to the last thing I want to show you is that if you go to Google, and you just put in um, W3C HTML. It looks like somebody's already done that, huh? And you go over here. This is the original 
15-year-old W3C validator from which the I think the new HTML checker will replace this, okay? It sort of works and sort of doesn't work anymore. By that I mean when you start to use this, you're going to see that this is integrated into or you'll be redirected to the HTML the new HTML checker. So, rather than get you all confused and use this, don't. Just go to this checker over here which is at the validator.w3.org slash new and you and you'll be good. All right, good luck, have fun, and you'll see that you will learn a lot about how to write good HTML just by using this service and then eventually you won't be using it as much as you will when you start out.